Hello folks, is there anybody there? Welcome to 1984. It wasn't that great a year to be honest. <laughs> Although compared to 2020 maybe it wasn't so bad. Yeah, I can say we've had worse. Ah, oh, people are appearing. Hi folks. Hello. So, released April the 1st, 1984. Yes, we knew. <laughs> it wasn't a joke, honest. The follow-up to the cellar tapes, Cellar V. Was that Mum's idea? I have no idea. Yeah, it was Mum's idea, right? And there's people that haven't spotted the cellar tapes. One. Yeah. yeah. Okay, for no better reason than because it was track one, side one, let's do this thing, Roger's Revenge. <laughs> Ah, you're on, cat. 
As Roger's Revenge is the opening track of uh, Celebe. Ten points to anyone who knows who or what Roger was. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Have you remembered? I remember, I've remembered now. <laughs> it was the neck support out of the guitar case for the old Strat. It was a great big coffin shaped case and there was just this orange furry covered soft yeah. thing that the neck of the guitar sat on and somebody stuck two little eyes and a mouth on it and we called it Roger. There's no big story to any of this. That's as deep as it gets, I'm afraid. <laughs> anyway, Kat, where were you on the 1st of April 1984? I was three. Four, surely. Not till July. You've been five in July. Maybe. Who's <laughs> <laughs> not good at maths? You were confused <laughs> as well. <laughs> this is one that we uh, we nicked off Paul Chisnell's old band. Rewrote the words. Yeah. But changed the key. But otherwise nicked. It was called Now You're Not Near. So now yeah. it's called Don't Leave Me Here. Scans the same.
very much. Don't leave me here. I seem to recall it faded on the album, and we just came right, up with yeah, and, and we just came up with ending after doing it live. Genesis could always get away with fading songs. All right. Now this one, even Chris thought I should have played that one on the uh, 12 string, yeah, the didn't you? String, yeah. I didn't have a 12 string when we released Celery. Yeah. The reason I know that so accurately is it was a 21st birthday present and I turned 21 on the 20th of March 1984, about a week before Celery came out. Ergo, I couldn't possibly have played a <laughs> twin neck on this album. But you did play it on almost all. The live gig since then, I think. Yeah, I thought, what will I do with this 12 strings? And I thought, play, don't leave me here on it. This is uh, another one of Mr. Chisnell's influences. He brought the lyrics to us. He used to sing this one. Yeah. And we've done it, we did an acoustic version actually. It's up on YouTube somewhere of uh, the three of us virtually together in our gardens uh, playing a rather slowed down version. But this one, well, you know what this is. This is Fallen Leaves.
Yes, fallen leaves. Frog epic bit.
the stairs. Is that you, Mum? Thank you. It was the load. And it was the end of side one. Are you all all right out there? You're looking very quiet on my screen there. I don't know if I'm just not seeing you, but hello, hello everyone anyway. Yeah, that was side one of Celavi as was originally released. Uh, when we came round to reissuing it on CD, uh, when the original vinyl album had sold out, uh, Cyclops Records re reissued it for us as a CD. Uh, we made the perhaps <laughs> interesting decision uh, to swap sides one and sides two round. I think when we when we first released the LP, we put it with Roger's Revenge at the start. I think because we were trying to pretend not to be a prog rock band, so we'd like start with something fairly sort of poppy and eighty sounding. And then by the time it came round to the CD issue, I think we were trying to pretend to be a prog rock band. So we swapped the sides round and ended up opening the album with the altogether more epic track uh, Mirage, which is, of course, the original vinyl, the start of side two. I'll just take my uh, dressing, dressing gown off. Gown. Yeah. Oh, Look nice. at that, it's got a dragon on the inside. Yeah, that's exactly the same dragon we used to have, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well Alright. So, arguably the opening number, though it wasn't really. We are really a prog band, only not really. Mirage. Uh, make sure I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yes, he nearly played this on his old bass guitar, then he realised he'd strung it left-handed, or he'd strung it right-handed right -handed again. again. Yeah. And I don't think I could remember how. I might be able to do it. either way up. Yeah, no, just but... not ten minutes before we go live, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe not, yeah. Uh, right, let's, let's give this our best shot. Hit that button. <laughs>
Mirage. <coughs> After this is always a bit of a relief to have got through those two. I think we're good. Alright, this one there. One of the gentler songs, more one might almost say a ballad. This, I think when uh, when Sylvie got first got released on CD, when the old LP had sold out and Cyclops reissued it on CD, I think we were playing as World Turtle at the time as a duo. And I think, did we do a show at Herringthorpe Leisure Centre for the Classic Rock Society? I seem to remember. Uh, so when we were doing stuff with World Turtle, we kind of, it was just the two of us and sequencing and programming all the drums and the bass and stuff. Uh, so we like frantically programmed up some old Hayes songs and basically the Sylvie album. <laughs> kind of like the 20th anniversary of the Sylvie album when we put it out on CD, maybe. Some, there might have been something like that. It all, it all gets very fuzzy after so long. Uh, but yeah, we know we did a show, so we programmed up something for it. And so in the, in the World Turtle style, uh, rather than just having a hi-hat ticking away, counting time, waiting for drums to come in, we... Uh, See, World Turtle had a virtual percussion player. I quite liked him. I used to program him. <laughs> This is a. Uh, this is for whom?
drummer got quite chisel like in the middle there, didn't he? In that guitar solo, he's like, pfft, pfft, he was all over the place. Oh, he's, he's good. But that percussion player, though, he was great. What happened to him? I don't know, yeah. Was it alcohol that got him in the end? No, probably. And where was, uh, and where was John Gelly for the guitar solo? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So in Leeds, we probably, technology's not quite up to it, but... <laughs> I say, uh, he played it better than me, actually. It was a bit dodgy, but never mind. Never mind. I got this off. Uh, I got this off Mariana, which is why it's a little bit small for me. But let's uh, let's try some of the dragon side. This is a uh... <coughs> good hit. Yes, oh, very nice. Yes. Uh... Uh, very, very much a Mr. Chisnell song. This one. We should uh, we should do one of those things like we did with. Uh, Virtual collaboration. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get him, get him to sing it in his garden and uh, send it to us. We'll do it that way. Yeah, you could have a shovel and a canister of gas and everything, couldn't you, really, for this one? <laughs> Act it out. <laughs> oh, 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 the next video, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we've, got, we've got the mole, we've got everything, yeah. Oh, oh, we don't want to see him. We don't want him to come to a sorry end again, do we? He, he was hung at the 20th anniversary, very he, tragically. That's that mole's pretty well hung. This one is called The Home.
faces dim blind panic ring There's moles brown and black for to battle of you How do they know who is who? How do they know who is who? I get that one right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All these years. That was close. You'd have thought by now, but my synth was going a bit wobbly at the start. Was having a wobble? Uh, oh god. Was that? <laughs> yeah. I certainly yeah. remember I'd, I'd meant to put a little a little drum bit on the start and I forgot. Okay, we'll just do it tick 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 and it's a bit late though for that now. Alright, I want to sack the drummer, get a new one. Yeah. Don't Last. <laughs> last uh, last song from Salovey, and then we're on to uh, 1985. Ooh, ooh, missus. Right. This was uh, this was originally written about uh, our old Land Rover. It wasn't our Land Rover. It belonged to belonged to Chad Upholstery, and I had a Saturday job there when I was a teenager, helping deliver rear upholstered sofas. And he had this Land Rover called Gabadon that they had a trailer. It was GBD 763N. N. And used to have a trailer on the back of it and used to use it for delivering sofas on a Saturday afternoon and then we'd borrow it for all our gigs. So that's uh Which is very good of the boss really, wasn't it, Cliff yeah, Chapman? Very, very kind to us in the early days. Yeah. So uh and this was the line about lost along the A1M as well. We were recording the seller tapes. Uh, Derek Nash had come up to record with us for the day. And I think I'd been fishing to get us gigs out of town because we'd only ever played in Sheffield up until that point. And I sent loads of cassettes, as he did in those days, off to all these pubs and no one had replied. And then it was Saturday, I think it was a Friday or a Saturday during the day we were recording for the cellar tapes. And I just got a phone call from the pub saying, can you play us here tonight? So we were like, yeah, all right. So we hoisted up us, uh, me, Paul, Arthur and Derek with us. And we just, we just basically bundling the Land Rover and drove up to York. But we had... We had no idea where York was other than it was up to the A1. Uh, we hadn't like, had time to look at the map or anything, we just jumped in and went. It's quite a long road, so we weren't actually lost. We were going no. in exactly the right direction at the right speed. But the, uh, the Land Rover would only do a maximum of like 40 miles an hour with a trailer on the back. I once so got it to 60 and the trailer overtook me, that was interesting. <laughs> and then a wheel dropped off the trailer and we went to Hull on three wheels. Three wheels, three wheels <laughs> on my trailer on the highway to Hull. <laughs> You should write a song about that, That's really. That's a country western ACDC. Give that to Hayseed Dixie, couldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Three wheels on my wagon yeah. on the highway to hell. So this is <laughs> so this is why this is a daft song. This is about this <laughs> no other reason. <laughs> it's about a Land Rover called Gabadon. <laughs> Smoke like a chimney, the ground's and diesel You can run over weasels, out on the road He gobbles words like a roadie The power of God is in the hands of men 
so seamlessly into 1985. Thank you very much. That was the Ember, the title track from a 12-inch single from 85. So why did we release a 12-inch single? Yeah, it was a uh, 
explain that one if you can. Uh, yeah, we were, we were uh, we had a we, we we formed our own label because no one else, no one wanted to sign us, but we did get a distribution deal with Pinnacle Records, which at that time used to distribute for small labels, lots of the indie labels and the punk labels and stuff. Uh, so we were distributed by Pinnacle Records, and we'd done Cell of E with them, and that had gone okay. Uh, uh, but they were getting ready to do another album. We were, getting, I suppose, getting ready for Stoke and Bottle, really. Uh, but they they said to us uh, that they thought we ought to do a 12-inch single because they just had a massive hit. It was probably the best-selling thing ever on Pinnacle Records. Was uh, Blue Monday by New Order, and that you know it was like was it Factory one of the American one of the Manchester Independents, and they they were distributed through Pinnacle, and they did that 12-inch single with them, and it just was enormous. Because obviously it was a dance floor thing. So they were like, oh, you've got to do a 12-inch single, it'll be massive. Uh, yeah. So we were like, hmm, yeah, okay. So, so we did. So uh, so these were sort of yeah, new songs that yeah, may well have gone on the next album. And instead it was half an album. It, so was, half, it yeah. was like, yeah, it was our, our one and a half album. So, And it didn't sell millions all over Europe? No, in fact, I've still got a few boxes of it in the attic if anyone wants one. Uh, this is another silly song, funny that. Uh, this was about a true incident that happened in this very room, in fact, uh, when we first when we first sort of insulated it and tanked it out to stop it, to stop all the water coming in. Uh, there used to be a stream that flowed through and stuff. And yeah, the original ceiling that we put up was a little bit... You see, I don't think that's true. Uh, oh, do I, I think have... it's about that tale of mum and dad when dad had had some night nurse oh. and <laughs> it didn't suit him at all. So mum woke in the middle of the night and dad was apparently wide awake with both arms pointing up at the ceiling. She said, Brian, what are you doing? He said, I'm holding the ceiling up. Now a lot of wives would have said, you, daft, or me, like giving him a kick or something. But do you know what mum did? She put both hands up and said, it's all right, Brian, I've got it. And my dad went to sleep. <laughs> so hence, that's my interpretation of why this song's about, actually reacting badly to night nurse is uh, <laughs> cool yeah. the ceilings coming down yeah so i thought it was about shenanigans in the cellar but there you go here we go it works neither way <laughs>
ceiling's coming down when we originally recorded that as well to get the sort of audience participation bits in it which I hope you were all doing by the way uh, we basically recorded a basic track and then I think played this at a party at Chisers place didn't we? Did we? Yeah in the yeah. attic up at Stead Road that's it yeah and, uh, and everyone was completely uh, four sails to the wind and was uh, singing along and doing all the audience bits so we recorded that and stuck it onto the onto the tour single was that fantastic bit where we were recording it and it was all going and you were stood next to the mic and Chiz in an extremely slurred voice but is this it? Is this the one? It's brilliant that. <laughs> uh, so that was the ceilings coming down and that was side side one of uh, the Ember 12 inch so we're on we're on the home run with side two. This is a song that we haven't played in a long long time. Did we? Have we ever done it? No we've not done it so we didn't do it in World Turtle and I don't think we've ever done it since then. No, no drum program existed for this until last week. So. No, and uh, the whole, the whole ember thing. I think I said the uh, the sleeve for the ember. The the whole design for that was done by uh, Martin Kent, who used to he used to come and see us when we played at the Granary down in Bristol. Uh, we used to play quite regularly at that venue down there, and he used to he used to drive down on his little moped and he'd turn up absolutely soaking wet from like driving down on Gloucester or wherever it was he lived. Uh, but he worked. He works in a graphic design place, so he came up with the sleeve for us for that. Uh, and then later found... He's famous, isn't he, now? Yeah, found fame and fortune as Ace, the guitarist in Skunk and Anse. And since then, I think, didn't he get into the Guinness Book of Records for playing, for playing the smoke on the water riff through the most number of fuzz boxes? I think he played it through a hundred fuzz boxes chained up one after yeah, the other. I've got nearly that many. I could have a go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I might, Martin. I might, I might have you. <laughs> and of course, on the on the back uh, on the back of the Ember 12 inch, we had uh, some photos of us taken at the Marquee Club uh, by, of course, the wonderful Oz Oz Hardwick, uh, who I know has been tuning in regularly to us. So hi, Oz. Uh, he, I know he took photos for quite a lot of the sort of uh, prog and psychedelic bands, uh, full, moon, full Moon and people like that. And, and he's a poet. So yeah, shout out to uh, Martin Kent, wherever he might be, and to Oz. Uh, good to see you and thanks for, yeah, thanks for the artwork. The check's in the post. <laughs> this is uh, Freedom Road, this is about a pub at the bottom of our road. It's a street, yeah, it's a few streets away actually.
Salem Road Washed in blood but paved in gold Freedom Road, Freedom Road Washed in blood but cold as stone Freedom Road, Freedom Road Washed in blood but paved in gold Very much, Freedom Road. So by 85 by the ember, I've got a twin neck with a 12 string. So, this is more or less what we did with it.
beast and a half. <laughs> Mountain and that was uh, the whole of the Celebi album followed by the Ember 12 single. Uh, in two weeks time we'll be turning our attentions uh, to the Cellar Replay or Cellar Replay as it was called when it got reissued on CD and that was uh, that was a lot of the Cellar Tape songs we recorded with Paul Chisnell and a few other oldies thrown in. So that'll be, uh, that'll be for two weeks time. Next week We'll be in the garden doing some acoustic stuff in our virtual garden party. But we've been, we've been trying to come up with a... What's the word? Sort of era-appropriate encores to throw something a little different in to finish 
the afternoon off. Should probably have done this one last week, but we didn't have a drum program. Can you get this off the internet? <laughs> yeah, I nicked it. <laughs> nicked it off the internet like everything else. <clears throat> oh, that hotbed of thievery. So yeah, we'll leave you with this one for this afternoon and thanks for tuning in and listening. Uh, yeah, cheers for following and sticking with us and yeah, we'll, we'll carry on doing this for as long as it takes. <laughs> Until there's nobody down that side of the screen popping yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> So we're just playing it to a computer screen and a camera. So yeah, we'll leave you with this one for this week and thanks a lot folks, see you all soon. Yes.
Thank you very much, folks. That's all for this week. <coughs> See you again soon. See you in the garden. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or up a tree or something. <laughs> oh, no. We have to do that now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Dig a hole and play in it. <laughs>